Hello everyone, finally we are here, the long awaited school merchant guide that you asked me for in such a long time. So since I rework, like, um, I had uh, weird feelings about the school merchant because like uh, at the beginning I enjoyed the changes, uh, especially because like uh, the um, game on stage build and all that kind of stuff it was uh, heavily nerfed. So that was a good thing, like, uh, as I say, don't stream, like, I prefer having uh, this skull merchant than a uh, uh, tool for harassment. <laughs> More than harassment, a tool for um, being obnoxious. It's like uh, taking a game on stage with uh, no other goal, like, uh, was totally wrong. So... I'm kind of okay with this, but at the same time, like, uh, as I said uh, on stream many times, like, um, I feel like the new school merchant is a, a sort of easier version of what I um, used to do, and uh, I lost a bit of motivation at playing here. That's also why I'm so excited for the next chapter, the Chucky chapter. But, uh, you know, like, uh, so many of you asked me for uh, um, School Merchant Guide. Uh, I understood that, that uh, um, you need uh, or you want uh, some tips to play here better. And, like, uh, I was like, uh, I, I owe you this because, like, if I'm here today, like, it's also because of the support of all of you. So... Sorry for the introduction, but like I really wanted to be as open and honest with all of you because like um, I feel like air changes like made it a lot simple, a lot more simple than uh, what uh, I used to do with the uh, whole school merchant to get value in chase. This said, <clears throat> I'm gonna try to be as um, simple as possible in the description of the power and uh, what are the add-ons, uh, my suggested build, and then I'm gonna show you something about the drone placement, uh, the early game, and stuff like this. So let's start from the power. Like her power now is, uh, if you play the school merchant, uh, like at the release, like the power now is really different. Like uh, um, the school merchant begins the match with six drones instead of four. Press the power button to deploy a drone, which conducts an invisible continuous sweeping scan. Deploying a drone grants undetectable for 8 seconds. If a survivor is detected, the drone becomes active, which makes the drone scan lines visible. Once detected by a scan line, a survivor gains a scan immunity and cannot be detected by other scan lines for 3 seconds. Survivors can attempt to, do to hack the drones and failure activates the drone and partially fa fails the lock on me. Their success disables the drone for 45 seconds. So, I think that the description here is really clear, but I, like, I want to try to explain some concepts that I see that many people are struggling with. So, first of all, like uh, once that you deploy a drone, like uh, the drone is immediately scanning. Like, uh, it's an invisible scan line. Um, at the moment it's a bit bugged, so sometimes you don't see the movement of the drone. But... Uh, if everything works as it should, like you can see the drone uh, actually rotating, uh, like uh, where the lights of the drone are, like uh, the invisible scan line is. So, as a survivor, like uh, if you see a drone flying, like uh, you can uh, kind of understand where the drone is actually scanning during that moment. There are a few things that uh, this description doesn't say. Like, uh, you have to uh, to counter this, uh, especially if you're out of chase. Like, you can stand still to not get tracked by a scan line, and you can crouch to avoid the scan line. So, uh, even if the scan line goes through you and you are crouched and uh, you keep uh, going on, like, uh, you are not scanned by the scan line. So this is uh, something important. I don't know if uh, everyone knows about it, but, uh, like, this is uh, really, really cool. Also, passing f under the drone, basically doesn't um, make you scan it, but be careful, because if you wait uh, under the drone, like, you get the full uh, lock-on immediately. What well, is lock-on? It's explained here, basically. 
in uh, the lower part. The lock on meter fills when scanned by a drone, when failing to disable a drone, when the meter is full, the survivor receives a flow trap and becomes injured and suffers from the broken status effect. Additional scans briefly apply, apply the injured status effect, that is uh, 10% for 6 seconds. A claw trap broadcasts the survival location to the killer and is only removed when its battery dies. So, basically you get a lot of uh, debuff if you are uh, scanned three times, uh, you cannot remove lock on status. And um, once that you get a claw trap you are injured, you are in broken status, so you cannot be healed. And uh, additional scans apply the injured status effect. So, if you have a claw trap and you are chased and you are detected by a drone, like you get a slow down in your movement speed. At the same time, like uh, every survivor detected on the radar, and this works for when a survivor is detected by a scan line and when a survivor gets a close up, increases the school merchant speed. So you can see how basically every time someone is scanned, like uh, she gets buff and you get the buffs. And um, this is kind of why um, I feel that she's simple, more simple. Like you're gonna see the clips uh, later, but uh, like. Uh, you can see how basically all of these things uh, are a lot uh, and like uh, the efforts to get these values uh, like is um, a lot uh, more simple than before. Also because you have six drones so you can have more tools at your disposal and uh, you don't have to use the drones for macro management as it is. So these are important things like uh, if you want to know more infos about uh, how long the haste effect uh, of the skull merchant is or what's uh, the um, skull merchant uh, haste effect, like uh, it's a 3% for one survivor uh, tracked by the radar, 5% for two survivors, 6% for three survivors, and 7% if every survivor is tracked at the same time. Remember one thing. Um, when you are just scanned by a drone, like uh, you still go in the radar of the school merchant and the ship still gets the haste. So these uh, last, I think, six seconds, I'm not really sure about it, I should check it to be honest, considering that I'm making a guide. But uh, like uh, during this time, like uh, that can be increased by uh, an add on, like you have to be careful because. Uh, she knows where you are, and she goes uh, uh, faster at the same time. Also, you activate the drone in uh, scanning mode that uh, basically makes the scan lines uh, rotate a lot more fast. A lot, a lot faster, sorry. An important thing of the school merchant at the same time is that uh, she can change the rotation of the drones, and she can recall the drones at uh, their uh, will. And uh, changing the rotation of the drones basically allows you to, like, if you change the rotation um, of the loop uh, while chasing a, a survivor, you realize that uh, by changing the rotation, like, the scan lines go to the survivor phase instead of rotating uh, in the same direction the survivor. Like, uh, all of these things basically are applied. And um, this makes her really, really strong in chase. Not the strongest, but like um, kind of in a strong position in chase. Like uh, if you have a drone in the right position, like uh, school merchant is actually able to cut off a loop and uh, negating a loop. And uh, if they stay in the loop, like you, they have to deal with a free health state or uh, like uh, getting slowed down. An important thing, if the survivor is already injured, that uh, when they get uh, a lock on, uh, a full lock on, so a claw trap, they don't get uh, injured again. So this is really important. Uh, they get only the deep wound status. This is important uh, also because of the next patch where made for this a really popular perk that most likely it's gonna be used uh, less but uh, if it's gonna be still popular like uh, when uh, they get a claw trap so they go in deep room basically they get this uh, um, their uh, perk in that kind of situation but that aside like uh, this is important to know because like uh, some people maybe expect uh, like some people don't understand why sometimes uh, i get injured why sometimes it doesn't happen what happens like uh, stuff like this 
this is the main difference. It's a bit like the Deathlinger, you know, like when you allow the chain to break and like they get the deep wound, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what, you know. But the, with the Skull Merchant, if they are fully healed, they get only injured, so no deep wound. Um, if they are really injured uh, and they get a close jump, like they get the deep wound. In this way, you can also counter some endurance perks as well. So no the Dard, no buckle up, no uh, off the record and stuff like this. So I tried to do, help you at understanding the power uh, a bit more. I hope uh, that uh, this uh, short explanation worked. Like because it's like uh, I know that uh, so many things. Uh, applied to a single power actually confuses some people so i hope that uh, with this explanation like it would help both survivor and killer now <clears throat> this is not my usual build but uh, this is a, a bit more my usual build let's start speaking from the add-ons like uh, <clears throat> this add-on decreases the survival scan line immunity duration by 25 percent is really really strong because uh, as you saw, like, uh, there is this thing, like, uh, a lot of people don't even know that there is a scanline immunity. Basically, the scanline immunity means that uh, if you are tracked one time during the same uh, loop, or maybe by... if there are more drones in the same area, like, if you go through another scanline and, like, you don't get immediately another lock on stack. But with this add-on... Uh, <clears throat> You kinda do, because like uh, the effect of this add-on is so strong that basically the scanline immunity is um, really, really, really reduced. And like uh, when they get attacked again in the same uh, loop, like uh, they kinda trigger again the effect of uh, the scanline. So this add-on, in my opinion, is one of our strongest add-ons. It's just a brown add-on, and like uh, considering what it does, I think it's a lot. <clears throat> this add-on uh, only applies blindness if they get a clone trap. Mm, I don't know, like. Um... Maybe you counter people who need the windows of opportunity to loop or like uh, this kind of stuff. This is an in a really, I think, interesting add-on because basically you get an extra second of a survivor appearing on the radar when they get detected by Skyline. This can look like something uh, not important, but at the same time, like not only you have the survivor on your radar for a longer time, but you also get the haste that we explained earlier. For a longer time so this add-on i didn't play a lot of it i'm gonna be honest with you but i feel like it can have more uses than what uh, we want to admit so take this in mind like if you want to try it like uh, you don't have only one second one extra second of uh, tracking but also an extra second of haste so why would the cloud trap suffer from uh, the twenty percent smaller skill checks? I don't think it's uh, worth it to be honest, because it usually it happens that sometimes you get the cloud traps from the distance, but uh, like uh, usually a survivor with a cloud trap uh, like uh, doesn't stay too much on gems, and usually it's the survivor you want to chase. So unless uh, you are already committing a chase that you know you can close soon, like uh, basically you don't get a lot of value from this add-on. There is a, a similar uh, add-on to this that is. Uh, where is it? This one, shotgun speakers. So basically, they didn't change the skill check uh, add-ons if you play the school merchant at release by much. But uh, like uh, now, this work only when the claw trap is in is on. So um, basically, considering how air power works, I think that uh, these are a worse add-ons now. As this should, honestly, I wish that they could just rework this. Increases the battery life of a cloud drops by 15%. I think this is a, actually a really decent add-on. Because it means that you have more time with someone with a cloud trap. So if someone is uh, getting a cloud trap from the distance, like you have the time to close a chase uh, and then uh, check in for that person and starting the chase on that person. Or like if the chase is getting long, uh, and that's already a bad news because like, you know, <laughs> a chase is... A, too long, like, uh, especially as I'm one killer, like, 
you risk to lose the game, especially now, where survivors are getting more and more optimal working on gens. Like, um, that add-on is mainly useful if someone gets struck from the distance and uh, you want to close a chase or you want to check an area before actually committing the chase on the survival with the close drop. This increases the disabled st status uh, duration of the drones, uh, kind of okay. This one is a really strange add-on. We dedicated a whole video to this because it was reworked from a, the original version with a rework. And basically it makes the drone not rotate. Uh, if you pair it with this add-on, it's really funny because like it goes at the time percent speed with the scan line. And this can be like this is a both one of the most interesting add-ons because it allows it to play in a um, really accurate way, like if you know where uh, actually the scan lines are going to face uh, and are going to be di directed when you place a drone, like this can be a really good add-on, but it has some problems, especially because of uh, bugs, but not only that. Why bugs? Like, uh, I noticed by playing with a crosshair that uh, sometimes the mm, beam is not placed at the, at the same point, so if uh, with a crosshair, like, technically, the scan line should uh, match <laughs> the little uh, dot that I have at the center of the screen. Like, sometimes it happened, other times I had this uh, moved a bit to the left, other times a bit to the right, and I think it's uh, because of a weird collision with something invisible, or because actually the drone starts uh, the rotation or a bit later or a bit uh, sooner than when it should be. Other people that notice that they think of the beams uh, um, in other kind of situations, so already this kind of, of thing basically makes the add-on a lot uh, more uh, RNG-based and like uh, this is not good. Like uh, If you have to play with an add-on like this, you need full accuracy and like if it's even something that you have no control on it, like uh, it's gonna be rough, you know? So. It's not really reliable. Then there is another problem that is um, more um, dependent by the design of the killer. Like, uh, by having the drone not rotating, basically, it's less likely that you can uh, cut off some areas or getting even uh, random uh, scans uh, around the map. Like, it's a better tool in chase for a more skilled skull merchant. But at the same time... Uh, it uh, removes a lot of other things that the, this cool merchant can do. And considering that a, a killer is not only chase, especially I'm one killer, or it shouldn't be, and uh, you have no mobility in anything, like uh, losing that uh, extra possibility of tracking, of knowing where they are, of getting an injured status without uh, even being there, like, it's actually a big, big risk. So, from some point of view, of view like, I like the idea behind this add-on, from other ones, like, I think that uh, you are nerfing yourself of a lot and, like, uh, against uh, the better teams, like, you're gonna... Uh, you're gonna deal with a lot of issues. This is a, a other add-on that I consider meta. Vital targeting processor increases the injury status effect again by close up the survivors when detected by a drone by 3%. It's a really strong effect because, like, you know, 13% of uh, hindered uh, for 6 seconds is a lot. So, um, you can understand by yourself how strong uh, is, uh, is this add-on. This one basically gives you hemorrhage and mangled uh, if you hit a survivor with a close up, but uh, like at the same time, you know, basically it means that uh, they can be reset uh, in a slower way. And uh, you need them to be fully close-trapped to have value from this add-on. Uh, it can be good in certain cases, but I don't think it's uh, in the top list uh, of uh, air add-ons. Also because like, if you want to play something that gives that, those effort, uh, till uh, Sloppy Butcher is a perk, like add-ons like this uh, like, uh, don't 
find uh, a reason to send the bill. Because yes, you can say, okay, you save a perk, and perk are more important, true. But at the same time, Sloppy Butcher allows you to eat a survivor you don't want to commit a chase on, and like uh, having that uh, staying injured or like uh, that uh, slower healing speed. I don't think that this is a really good for the main reason that, like, basically you can apply this effect on, your, on a survivor that most likely you are gonna hook. So, um, it's only good if you are not going to kinda of tunnel the survivor <laughs> after the nook, and um, if you are not gonna find the survivor after the nook, like, if they have the time to heal themselves and stuff like that. I don't know. Like, uh, I don't, uh, I don't think that this is uh, really worth it, to be honest. Survivors with a cloud trap suffer from the exhausted uh, status effect for 6 seconds. Uh, I like it that I don't like it at the same time. Why? Um, mainly because like if it's a survival with dead hard, like uh, basically you are already injured them maybe without um, um, without using the, the cloud trap. And like uh, by just uh, uh, applying deep wound effect uh, when they get fully scanned, like they cannot use the dart anyway. And that's basically the main add-on that you can counter. Uh, and the, sorry, the main exhaustion perk that you can counter. Maybe smash it or something like that. But like uh, technically, they can be perfectly able to use uh, their exhaustion perk uh, before they get to the close up. So. I don't know how to feel about this add-on. Like usually the exhaustion add-ons are considered really strong. This one, I think that uh, it depends a lot if uh, they are able to use the um, exhaustion perk before they get a close drop, and like the chances are really likely, unless it's the dart. Unless it's the dart, but like uh, I repeat, if he, they are already injured, you get a close drop on them, and like they get uh, the deep on the status effect. <laughs> So they cannot use the dart anyway. Anytime a cloud trap is removed, the survivor aura is revealed for four seconds. Um, usually, you are committing the chase on the survivor with a cloud trap, or um, if you cannot, like you have a generic idea where they are. So I don't think it's really worth it. Survivors with a cloud trap suffer from the oblivious status effect. Okay, this one can be a bit more uh, useful if you like they get a random uh, cloud trap from around the map. This situation is likely. Like, it's not so rare, but, like, um, it depends a lot of... It's all really based on survival mistakes, because, like, if they know the position of the drones, if they call the position of the drones, if they know to sneak uh, in, like, uh, usually, they should be able to avoid to getting a close up uh, from the distance. Fun... Me, Madon, uh, I will say, but like, I keep thinking that uh, we already identified the best addons for her. Randomized drops was completely changed, uh, like, uh, now increases the duration of the hindrance status effect uh, by Cloud Trap the Survivor, and that, uh, uh, for Cloud Trap the Survivor when detected by a drone by one second. One second is uh, important, actually, especially if you pair this with this. So, this is still a really decent add-on, uh, for sure, in uh, the 8 year list of uh, the add-ons of uh, the school merchant. Prototype Rotor, I don't really think it's worth it. Uh, geographic readout actually, is um, still a really good add-on, like, um, during the 8 seconds after deploying the drone, like, you have faster action speed for breaking uh, pallets, breakable walls, but also damaging generators and vaulting. So it's a really huge buff, and um, basically on your command. So if you are uh, pairing it with a um, bamboozle or with a brutal stamp, basically you insta vault or you insta break a pallet. So this add-on is still really, really strong. In the S tier list, uh, the add-on to the school merge. This one is still bad, in my opinion, like, uh, why do you need our reading on a survivor? You can already track with the radar and this last also only 6 seconds. This one is uh, interesting, like, uh, for uh, stealth silent builds, like, uh, 
We are in the range of uh, the meme uh, for fun builds. And this one uh, um, gives you more haste, but uh, at the by sacrificing uh, uh, battery life. I was trying a build with this, uh, basically with this I had more uh, duration for um, the haste that you get from a uh, scan and uh, with this like you had a more haste effect uh, for every scan, like uh, basically in this way I would get more value from uh, the scan of the survivor and also of course playing it with uh, stuff like rapid brutality and uh, things for haste. I think that uh, here we are still in the range of uh, the meme stuff, but like uh, a bit, uh, a bit stronger if you get the value from it, you know. Because like uh, if you start getting really really fast, uh, basically you are kind of uncounterable in chase. As builds, like uh, I'm gonna mainly speak about the best perks for her like uh, to win then uh, of course you can run stuff like this for uh, uh, full chase uh, and stuff like that but like you know with a build like this is a uh, hit or miss because like you can you have nothing to stop the jump progression you have nothing for the end game so I usually try to balance my builds around, uh, well, Corrupt to have uh, a better idea of uh, how to start a game, also to push them at moving before instead of working on a gen. And already with this, like, the gen uh, pressure can be huge by the survivors, so. But at the same time, it's a kind of needed perk, like, if you don't want to make survivors immediately work on a gen at the beginning of the game. Pop Ghost the Weasel is the slowdown perk I chose, uh, paired with the Trillion Tremors. Why Trillion Tremors? Uh, like, uh, as I said, uh, like you have no tool for macro management anymore, and like Trillion Tremors is a, such a good perk to know where to go after a hook, uh, and like in this way, like you can even uh, time your uh, undetectable with a drone, or, like uh, to sneak on the gen uh, you have seen they are working on. And this way you can get uh, a free hit, maybe even a grab, uh, if they are not in common, they are so cute. If they are uh, better players, maybe they are calling your position, so maybe you don't get that. But uh, like uh, in this way you... If you can, like you can use your pop ghost weasel. Then as a chasing perk I always choose bamboozle, uh, especially for um, M1 killers, but uh, like you can also go for stuff like uh, brutal strength. It can be really good, like... Uh, you can uh, choose your basically your uh, chasing perk, but uh, like Bamboozle, I think that uh, it's the one that uh, possibly allows you to play around some uh, tiles uh, that uh, have really strong windows, or like to avoid uh, uh, placing a drone uh, in a heavily window based tile once that uh, the palette is gone. Like, for example, the Jungle Gym. Like you don't need a drone uh, in the jungle gym if you have bamboos. <clears throat> Brutal strength can also be really, really good with air because, like, uh, the um, synergy with their power is huge. Like, you can place a drone in a way that uh, slows them down while uh, you are uh, breaking a pallet, or like uh, that uh, injures them while you're breaking a pallet, and this way you save a lot of time. Um, can you sacrifice this for another slowdown perk? Yes, maybe you can go for Pain Resonance, maybe you, if you want something for endgame you can go for Noed or for uh, uh, No Way Out, or if you feel confident at finding survivors, like you can uh, renounce to Trillion Tremors and just go in for uh, a second slowdown instead uh, in Trillion Tremors, a Trillion Tremors place, and like a Staying with the, your uh, chasing perk because, like, you are basically in one killer who can slow them down. So, a chasing perk can help you a lot. But, like, uh, this depends a lot of, from your playstyle. Like, uh, I chose the um, better balancement in this, uh, but, like, uh, sometimes there are still games where I feel that the gens got to get, get a lot faster, or, like, there are games where I feel like uh, if I had a, an extra LP in game, maybe I could get something more than what I got. So, this is up to you. Like, if you 
want to sacrifice uh, tools for macro management, you can uh, remove these. Uh, if you prefer a slow down perk, like you can go for pain resonance with pop. If you prefer uh, an ending perk, you can go for no head or no way out. Like this is the thing. Everything else, like uh, say the best for last, can be good. Uh, yeah, okay. Sloppy butcher is an amazing perk. Like you can also go for sloppy butcher pain resonance with pop. Like you are really. Um, slow down a based build like uh, you can have some tools that actually make the game slower for them or like to help you by using more meta perks this solution is a perk that i saw used on air but like if you place a drone during a chase like basically you have no terror radius for eight seconds so if they vault during that time like they they don't break the palette, but at the same time, like I saw, people enjoying this chase and this perk as a chasing perk, so up to you. Enduring can be decent, like um, there are a few options that you can run uh, with it, to be honest. For me, this is one of the most balanced options that you can go for. Um, I repeat, at the end, like uh, you have to be the one uh, knowing yourself, like. Uh, um, and I always invite people at the uh, same stuff by themselves, but uh, like, of course, like uh, the meta builds are uh, always in this range. So, uh, a chasing perk that can be bamboozled or brutal, or uh, coup de grass is also good, or uh, this solution, uh, the one you prefer, um, corrupt intervention, pop goes the weasel, and then uh, if you prefer a uh, um, tracking perk, you can go for this, or you can uh, go for sloppy butcher and slowing the game uh, uh, again. Uh, Paint resonance, we already spoke about it. Uh, uh, maybe eruption, uh, sloppy, I think I already said it, uh, like uh, no way out, no other. Like, this is the range of the perks that, that they, if you want a build. That is actually a 32 in games, in my opinion. I think I said everything for the intro. Like, I know it's really long. I don't know if you're gonna stay here. Like, um, now I'm gonna record some clips uh, of uh, how to set up the early game and uh, some drone placement ideas that I want to share with you so that you know where to place the drones uh, in chase, uh, common mistakes, and stuff like this. Okay, here we go. Like, um, this is a game with bots, but like, um, here the, the thing is not uh, like. Oh, I, I forgot to set them up in. With no miter. So, here the concept is not how to win the game. Like, uh, first concept uh, setting uh, up the drones. Like, uh, a good drone can be this, for example. Like, uh, this way, like, you cover uh, this wall loop. And like you have also a sort of negated connection to the shack, but also to that pallet. Like it's a really decent uh, response. Like, uh, up to you to make the choices. Then this is where I usually prefer to place the drone a shack because, like in this way, you can cover that window. You also can cover potentially these gaps, and you can also cover this one because as you can see like the rain use here is uh, big enough i think that uh, really soon we are gonna see gens popping because the bots are really optimal gens now er like uh, this can be another really good drone basically because like you cover this part or, like you negate uh, this uh, uh connection at least for presetting Because, uh, like, uh, if you want to, if you are mid the chase uh, instead, like, uh, and you know that they are going to commit to the pallet and not connecting it with that, like, uh, you can place the drone here, forcing the pallet to drop in this, in this direction, taking the pallet, uh, and, uh, like, uh, most likely when they leave the loop, like, they get, uh, they get tracked by the scan line, you know? I'm gonna try to show this uh, in uh, Apple uh, sort of chases. In a loop like this, uh, like I usually prefer to go for something like this. Why? Because like usually, the, especially if you play with the bamboozle, the most problematic part is the pallet. So 
if a survivor wants to run that. And then, uh, like, uh, they also still have a chance of getting tracked uh, while trying to go for the window. So, usually prefer to have uh, the best coverage of uh, all uh, the possibilities. So, I usually prefer to have the drone uh, looking both at the pallet and at the window. In the jungle gyms, uh, like, it depends a lot. Usually try to go for a position like this. Because in this way, like, uh, the drone beam uh, should be able to track them even when they are running uh, here in the window. And, uh, like, uh, also, you know, when they go inside uh, from the side of the pallet, like, uh, they get tracked as well. When uh, there is this pallet, usually, like, uh, I place the drone here, like, it's the most optimal uh, position. Um... You cover the wall loop uh, and uh, like uh, it's basically unavoidable for a survival. Here, that concept that I explained earlier is even uh, more valid because, like, you can see how thin is uh, this wall. So, basically, you cover the wall loop in the most important sites there. They are kind of just rushing me, but who uh, cares? <laughs> And uh, here I try to do something similar. An important thing is uh, like uh, remember the concept of uh, zoning. Like zoning as a I'm one killer is always important. Like uh, your idea is always trying to push in an area where, or you know that you have more drones placed, or like where the drone is looking. So, for example, if they are uh, looping this style, don't make them run the loop in this way. Because if they run the loop in this way, like once that you break the pallet, when uh, you're gonna break the pallet, or they drop the pallet, like. Uh, interesting. Like they are not getting scanned. But if you force the loop in this direction, like uh, when they are gonna drop the pallet and uh, waiting uh, to see what you're going to do because like uh, they know that uh, they cannot stay there for too long because there is a drone like um, while you are breaking it like they most likely are going to get hit so this is really important uh, the you have to try to break the pallet in the, the direction of the drone position. There is another important thing, basically, like, uh, I'm gonna make an example, like, let's see if uh, we can do it. Usually the bots are kinda cheating, yeah. Lately I'm gonna show you with a human player, like, um... Something important that I want to tell you is uh, be careful of where you place the drone. It's like, uh, if you place the drone, um, maybe this is the worst look to look at it. Interesting, they still try to help each other at uh, raising themselves up. <laughs> like, for example, if you are facing a survivor here, or like, you want to negate the loop uh, here, usually some survivor can make the mistake of, uh, uh, some killers can make the mistake of uh, putting the drone here. If you do this, like, you deactivated the drone for a bit, so basically they are not getting scanned during that period, so be really careful about this. So this is a general idea of uh, how to start a game and uh, common drone position in pre setting. Then I'm gonna show you what to do during a chase. Okay, so this is an example of how you should... Uh, loop so, for example you have a survivor like here running the loop what you want to do is uh, basically placing a drone on this side forcing them at uh, dropping the pallet and uh, you can do this and like uh, now the survivor basically when uh, you break the pallet when he leaves the loop like uh, or they get injured like this or um, <clears throat> if they have a claw trap, like they go slower. So, and this is uh, basically 
your main goal as school merchant when you play as an in chief. This is one reason why I personally recommend or suggest to um, play with Brutal Strength, like that's actually a really good uh, perk for her. Like you can see even without hungering like they cannot leave this, but you can do this. Of course it's better if you can uh, slow them down uh, even more, but you can see how this is effective enough. So. As I was ex explaining earlier, like, um, you can track survivor through the gaps, uh, so placing a drone like this uh, um, in a way that uh, actually goes through these uh, gaps behind the shack, like, uh, allows you to even injure or slow down the survivor, so this is actually a really nice trick, and, uh, like, if you uh, are playing with a shack like this, like, uh, this is the better idea. Remember one thing that is really important, like uh, the beams actually get larger the more distant they are from the center of the drone. So basically the better position is the middle of the shack, because in this way you can see how like, uh, the beam uh, goes through the wall window and the wall uh, gap. If you do something like this, uh, instead, like, you're gonna have a really short um, tracker here, and, like, uh, the angle, uh, ironically, is even reduced. So, basically, this is not a really good uh, drone. Yes, it's true that you can maybe cover a bit more from here, but, like, the best thing, uh, I repeat, like, uh, it's always uh, putting the drone in a way that is able to cover the most part of a single tile. So in this way, like, you cover the back, the center, and the two windows. This is an important part of the school merchant uh, power. Like, um, many people actually forget that uh, the school merchant power actually is also a tracking power. So, if you're able to trigger the tracking, like you can use it to see the, posi uh, the position of the survivor mid loop, like you have a sort of aura reading, you know? So you can understand if they are camping a pallet, if they are leaving the loop, like all of these are important informations that can basically help you a lot while uh, running tiles with a um, wall, a high wall, or a view blocker, like, uh, you can also take advantage of these uh, uh, while uh, placing another drone, while they are cracked, so that uh, they cannot track you, and, like, basically, in this way, like, you can mine game while knowing exactly where they are. You can also understand if they are living in the loop, so uh, avoiding to mind game yourself if uh, you are afraid that they <laughs> keep looping the same strong tile, or like uh, you can uh, actually read all of their movements. You can understand if they are camping the pallet, if uh, it's better to just hit the pallet and then remove the pallet. Like uh, a lot of, ta of, of things that can actually be. <laughs> solved just by looking at the radar once the uh, survivor is tracked and doing the same loop. Okay, so now, in a situation like this, where you don't have, uh, where you have only a single drone, I repeat, like, it's always better that you have a single drone and uh, you are um, playing uh, a school merchant, like, and you have set your web, like, the, your best call is basically trying to push them in areas where you already set the drones. If you actually see that uh, every tile is actually linked to each other. So in this way the survivor is avoiding to go there, but like... Um... <clears throat> At the beginning, we kind of forced them at going uh, to a position that was kind of far from a safer pallet, because, like, they saw that there were the drones in the distance. Like, now you recall a drone, and, like, you have the same possibility again. Or you push them in an area where you already have drones. That is always the best thing. Like, you can see how... 
we already have the shock uh, with a drone, so in this way, like, uh, we can still catch them up. <laughs> we missed it for a bit, but like, now we are in a... In a jungle gym, uh, in, in a healthy world, sorry, and like you can see how thanks to the tracker we know what they are doing and where to go for attack. So we kind of covered everything of um, the school merchant. I showed you some of these examples where uh, what should be your game plan when you play with the school merchant. Uh, how you have to preset as many drones as possible in areas so that you know the survivors can go a chase or areas that are important for your patrolling there are other tricks that you can always use so like uh, remember that for eight seconds you're undetectable so if you know where a survivor is working on a gen or like even if you know the position of a survivor because you're using a tracking perk you can uh, kind of time your um, undetectable to sneak on them and getting a, in the worst scenario a free hit and another trick that I recommend you is like uh, if you realize that um, a pallet can simply just uh, go really fast instead of uh, risking uh, them to take distance while you are setting a drone, like just hit a pallet, uh, especially if it's not covered uh, covered by a drone, and like um, then go to the next tiles that are most likely are more in your favor because are already covered by a drone. I think that it's everything, like, uh, as I said, like, I consider, like, this school merchant kind of basic. Like, I think that uh, if you know how to play I am one killer, like, applying these concepts are really easy, like, uh, um, how to get the most advantage when you are uh, trying to zone a survivor, remember to try to push the survivors as much as you can in the um, corners of the map. Uh, the most important... Uh, Drones have to be set uh, most likely in the um, pillars at the center of the map because these are the pillars that the survivors most likely try to reach every time they can to um, try to take distance to reach the corner of the map. But uh, like once they are in the corner, like you can simply play like I showed you before. So, these concepts have to be like uh, really, really mediate and really really easy uh, to understand like um, once that uh, you have all this kind of game sense uh, you understand where you have to push the survivors uh, once that you have you get better and better at setting your web you identify what are the better types to cover with a drone like when you have to take a drone back to place it uh, in another tile that uh, is uh, uncovered at the moment but can be more useful later considering that you already removed an important filler palette like all of these things have to be a thing like remember to break the palettes uh, brutal strength is a really good perk break palettes from the right position uh, uh, break palettes possibly while they have a drone on their back and in this way like uh, breaking a pallet is not going to be a huge time waster because like or they are slowed down or they are getting a uh, even a direct hit. I hope this was useful. Uh, uh, I'm open to every kind of question like uh, and uh, I hope that you're excited for the next feature of the contents where we are going to study Chucky starting for the next week. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I hope you are going to have fun with the school merchant.